Because there's a unique reason that your life is going the way that it's going. Something unique, some unique message that's just meant exactly for you. Let me ask a little truth. I'd like to know your point of view. Hi everyone, welcome to Eating TV. The, the primary focus of my channel is reinvention. How you reinvent yourself after your life is basically stolen or completely falls apart or is in shambles. I have done that now twice. And I've actually written a series of books. I've written The Art of Reinventing Your Life, The Art of Loving Again, and a companion journal that you can use with both the books or by itself. So please come to my website or go to Amazon.com to find those books. Thanks. At, at 33 years old, I had a heart attack and a near-death experience that this was telling me something, this heart attack was telling me something, my body was saying no, no more. Because what happened then was, whether or not I lived or died that day, life as I knew it was over. Within a year, my husband, had, and he was a diagnosed sociopath, by the way, my husband had left me, he had convinced my parents to, to take his side and go with him. Nothing happened, so I was disabled, penniless, homeless, you name it and without any, without any support. I rebuilt my life and basically did that for my sons. My sons are my motivation. My love for them was what got me, you know, kept me going, plus my near-death experience. That is all kind of what kept me going. It was a real spiritually based motivation. And then in 2016, my son died. And that life then was over. My younger son is here here now he's moved here it's been an adjustment because he got here and he's not doing very well he just turned 25 and it's probably been five years since he's lived with me you know when i would just see him at visits or see him at christmas or you know things like that and talk to him on the phone once a week i didn't know that he was struggling as much as he is he has some just severe CPTSD Talk symptoms. I haven't had any interactions whatsoever with my children's father in over a decade. But still, his what he did to my life via my family, via my children, just it's, he, he touches every single day of my life. I remember praying to God years ago when my kids were little, please protect my kids. Please help them to get through this okay. And it doesn't feel like that prayer was answered. Yeah. I know that the goal of life is not happiness. I know that if you have happiness as your goal in life, as a thing you're aiming for, or you have this tidy package, you have life the way you pictured it to be as the goal, you will be unhappy. You will never be satisfied. You have to trust that you don't have a full perspective. You can't see the big picture from here in this 3D universe, in your body, you know, through your human eyes. You just can't see it. I believe that whatever is happening is being orchestrated on a, on a higher level with a full perspective. And I also believe that we were part of planning it. That we, you know, we took part in planning it was a co-creation. If that doesn't resonate with you, let it go. That's fine. But I think what should well pretty much speak to anyone who's a human is that life is hard. Life is just hard. And grief and messiness and loss and all of that is just a big part of it. And we weren't meant to come here to live these perfect, tidy lives. We just weren't. And people who maybe look like they have lives that just are so much easier, so, or things worked out and all that, and you think to yourself, I, do, I think this to myself all the time, I think, if I just hadn't married that guy, you know, why couldn't I have just married a good guy the first time around? Well, I couldn't do that because I was raised by narcissistic people and that wasn't what I knew, and I married what I knew, and you know, and I learned a lesson that my second husband is a good guy, but you know, I did the best I could. I did everything I, I did everything I did with the best of intentions. You know, I loved fully, and I'm sure you did too. I went into my marriage, I went into my, in, into parenting and motherhood and all that with full intentions 
of doing it 100% and giving it my all and having this happy family. I wasn't you know, prepared for what happened and I just wasn't, uh, I couldn't even wrap my head around it until after it was all over. And then I, and I basically had to figure out what happened to my life after it was already in shambles. So, you know, that's what I did in the second reinvention and now, now I'm in the third reinvention. And what I'm doing, just by the way, for that third reinvention is that I moved here to Mexico and I am designing a wellness center where I can offer the kind of treatment that I believe would have saved Noah. And Liam came here, my son Liam came here to do it with me. It just so happens though that I think Liam is going to be a more of a client. I think he's going to benefit from what we're going to be offering there first. It's just really hard when you realize that your, you know, your children's childhoods was completely ruined. And then when you get them to adulthood, you didn't escape. You know, my whole plan all the way through their childhoods was like, okay, we're just going to fly into the radar screen. Had to, until they were 18 and out of high school, they had to stay within 30 miles of him. And so I'm like, as soon as they get to be adults and they're done with high school, we'll move and they can get healing and we'll go on and create the perfect family for their kids, you know, and we'll just, in the meantime, we'll be really close. We'll, we'll appreciate what we have and all of that. Right. So I picture that now at this time frame, right now, the worst would be behind us. My kids would be doing well. They'd be finding themselves. We'd be a close-knit family and moving on. That's what I pictured. That's not how it's gone. That's not how it's gone. My, you know, my one son, like I said, he died when he was 20. He'd be 27 now. And his brother was 18. And his brother just turned 25. And I, it's hard for me to believe that that many years have gone by. It's really crazy. You can tend to feel a little stuck. I'm in some different groups with like um, a group called Helping Parents Heal. It's a group for people whose children have died. And in those meetings, sometimes people will come to share their books that they've written. And you know, they will have had a child that just died last year or two years ago, and they've written a book. And it makes you feel like, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not grieving. I'm not surviving as well as the next guy. You, you really, comparison is just another place to just hurts yourself, you know, just really hurts yourself. Each of us is on a journey that's all, of, all our own, unique journey. To end the point here with this thought is that before all of this started, before, before any of this started, I was very, very depressed, very depressed. And then I had this heart attack. And then all the people in my life abandoned me, stole my assets, and etc. My intuition or my body or whatever was trying to talk to me. It was trying to tell me, you need to pivot. You need to do something different in your life. And I was not listening. I had a lot of denial. I had a lot of blind spots. And uh, I did know that my, my marriage was not going very well but I was just committed and I thought it will get, it'll get better. We're just going through something right now. That's what I kept thinking. I was deeply into a life, you know, I was, we had a business together. We had these two kids together. I wanted to give them an intact family. And so after I didn't pay attention to the, to the depression, it resulted in a heart attack and a chronic injury after that too. So, you know, had I listened, I could have set myself up better because also, when he left me, he took everything. Totally destroyed me. When you're looking forward at your life and, you're, and you're, you're trying to call things a success or a failure, I'd be really careful at what, you know, who's to say what is a failure? You know, as a mother, you could say, well, when your child dies of a, of a drug overdose, you pretty much failed, right? And, and it's real easy to do that. It's real easy to do that. I, maybe I didn't fail, maybe I did, I did everything that I needed to do. Some lesson in that whole addiction process for me to learn. And I learned my son and I were really close when he died. We had our relationship was really good. And he was actually a really great guy, beautiful, talented musician. And I, I really did think he was going to be fine. I really did. And also because of my near-death experience years earlier, 
and I knew that my the fact that I was live alive was a miracle. I thought we were being sort of miraculously protected, and there had been a couple of things that happened that convinced me of that. I I do believe that that he knew he was going to go, and that it was always the plan, and for whatever reason. And so what I'm going through now with Liam is also part of the plan. When is enough enough? Like, when is there as is there at any point when we can get just get to it where it's like okay. The worst is behind you. Now we're gonna. Now we're gonna start seeing something paint that comes from all this. It will or it won't happen. But it's not gonna happen on my kind of time frame. That's just not how it works. You have to know that the harder your life is, and the more that you can make it through, without getting cynical, without getting bitter, without you know, and still being able to love, still keeping your heart open and soft, and all that. That is. That is the test, that is a lesson. And also, always in everything that you're doing, look for the lesson, look for the thing that's specific to you. Because there's a unique reason that your life is going the way that it's going. Something unique, some unique message that's just meant exactly for you. And your unique purpose in life is embedded in all of this. In this pain, there's something there for you. Look and listen carefully. And don't worry about somebody else who looks like they have this happy, perfect life. They might. Maybe they do. Probably not. But that's not your life. And, and you know, maybe you just came here to have a lot of spiritual growth. And you certainly are having more spiritual growth than someone who's had a perfect, happy life. You're not really growing during those times. You're growing when life is not meeting your expectations. And that's where pain is. You know, pain comes when what's happening in your life does not meet what you expected. Let me ask a little truth. I'd like to know your point of